yeah so uh, sorry for that uh, technical glitch uh, so i think uh, uh, i think now uh, i'll just uh, go back to the agenda again and uh, so so now uh, since the sophistication of cyber attacks and kind of new tactic techniques uh, that evolving by uh, by day uh, and those those require a really defense in depth approach where Additional security measures that we used to take in a SOC or in a CDC, those are no longer valid in this scenario. And uh, most of most of uh, most of the cases now that now 80 to 90 percent of workforce where uh, remote uh, work culture is adopted, uh, we are largely taking uh, edge devices and laptops and systems, uh, and we are working from remote locations where um, where that particular trust boundary and the perimeter uh, boundaries are no longer. Uh, are no longer there and hence there is a new entire new architecture is now evolved right and in that case uh, we really need to change in our approach as well because um, now since the architecture is different now since the uh, since the entire paradigm has changed we also need to change our security uh, security infrastructure security strategy uh, whether it is operational or whether it is uh, in terms of uh, governance or monitoring so all this needs to be changed and how we can mature our security operations with the threat ending and intelligence because uh, we usually talk us talk about the going more uh, proactive rather than the reactive approach it means we will not wait for threats to come to our environment rather than we go uh, beyond uh, our environment and look for those threats which may be uh, potential threats to my organization and uh, uh, being a lot of ISACs and information sharing center already there in the country as well as in the globe, we receive a lot of information and a lot of data uh, about. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Are you your presentation is not shared right now? Okay. So, uh, so I uh, do I need to go into the presentation mode? But then I won't be able to change. No, the you just I think you should just share screen and then put your presentation up. Okay. Uh, so is it okay now? It's not come up yet. Oh, I can see my slide um, on there. Um, I can't. I can't see. I don't think the audience can see it either. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. You might want to try changing the slide. Yeah. Is it changing? No, sadly, it doesn't. Now? Yeah, it's changing. It's changing. Okay, okay. So, okay. So, uh, so how we uh, how we go about? Uh, and you know, hunt those threats which are unknown to us because in recent attacks that we have seen in a solar wind or maybe some other attacks that we have seen, uh, that uh, those threats were uh, really unknown and those threats got exploited by attackers uh, and uh, those vulnerabilities got exploited by attackers and then we faced the uh, big breach and uh, was, was really going out of the control, right? So, I think that approach uh, of proactive hunting, proactive, proactive intelligence gathering, uh, that is very much critical and we are going to talk about it today. So uh, before we uh, jump into the threat, uh, before we jump into the threat intelligence and uh, the hunting practices within a SOC, uh, we, will, we will see that uh, how threat landscape is changing from uh, from the traditional uh, bots and traditional and, and uh, traditional threats. We see that uh, there are there are a lot of uh, APT groups which are uh, working in the banking and financial sector, which are uh, which are multi vector in the nature. They are capable of doing multiple things rather than uh, doing just one thing. It means one malware can be acting as a logic bomb. It, it can also have a capability to listen to your 
uh, uh, listen to your keyboard strokes. It is also capable to uh, silently uh, do a reconnaissance in your system. And when there is enough reconnaissance, it has some exploitation capabilities. So we have seen those multi-vector attacks and multi-vector threats, which are really prevalent and uh, they are really making an impact uh, in the banking and financial institutions. Uh, and, uh, and apart from that, uh, those, uh, those, those particular attacks, uh, those particular threats and malware having a polymorphic behavior, means they change their behavior by time. Uh, so we, we, we have seen the polymorphic behavior in the past, but the polymorphic behavior with multi-stage characteristics can be disastrous because either they are changing their behavior pattern, their, um, uh, their way of working, their modus operandi uh, with, the, with the time, and secondly, they are capable of doing multiple things. So, in uh, in the last session uh, uh, of uh, ransomware, we discussed that how uh, the ransomware is now new adopting some techniques. Right. Uh, uh, so it is not just encrypting the data, but before encryption, they are doing some exfiltration of data, so that even if you have a backup uh, uh, backup of the data and you are not paying ransom, the one copy of the data is still with the attacker, and they can publish those data to the public forum at any any cost or any time. So I think this level of sophistication that we have uh, we have been seeing in the last uh, last year and as a BSR for intelligence and research, we are also observed that these kind of threats are becoming more and more advanced. And uh, so we need to really understand uh, the modus operandi working of those particular threats if you wanted to prevent and defend against those threats. Um, uh, spear phishing uh, and uh, kind of uh, crypto jacking and uh, and you know, uh, kind of uh, credential attacks, those remains there as a initial exploitation. Um, and uh, and from there, it can uh, attacker can take a uh, take a hint, and he can understand about the environment, and uh, uh, and do the further steps uh, in the key chain. So, uh, the, so the, the point here is that uh, you see that lot of advancement and. A uh, lot of uh, work that adversaries are doing in terms of uh, in terms of uh, breaching and penetrating our systems, uh, and for that uh, we really need to go beyond the traditional approach, right? So, uh, so now there is one question that is always comes in our organizations or organization mind that what versus who means uh, we talks about either malware and attackers, but I think this, these days we uh, not just think of one factor over other. We need to think. Uh, holistically, we definitely need that uh, IOC and signature-based approach uh, to block the threats at the perimeter, to block the threats at uh, network level. Uh, uh, but again, that uh, that is again that uh, you know attack uh, signatures threats are changing uh, by time or by changing very frequently, so that uh, your signature-based detection and your signature signature-based approach is no longer valid. In that case, you really need to understand what attacker is trying to do, what uh, attackers and attacker motivations are, because usually uh, attackers can't keep techniques and procedures, but those usually don't get changed. So for example, uh, later part of the session, we are having uh, the map attack framework, where we will see that how to map uh, tactic techniques and procedures used by attacker, and we can use that uh, to prevent uh, uh, any of the incident or any of the event. So at this moment, it is very critical and essential to understand not just malware, not just IOCs, not just signature, but the tactic techniques and procedures which is a followed by attacker. Now you'll ask me what is new you're telling about this, right? But uh, we have been uh, we have been investigating and researching about tactic techniques and procedures. But uh, are are uh, are we thoroughly managing uh, uh, or maybe correlating that with my infrastructure? I think that is more important. It means tomorrow I will pick uh, any sample of malware. We will block those IOCs. I will also map the tactic techniques and procedures uh, on the meta attack framework. But how do I correlate that with my infrastructure? What kind of assets? What kind of applications? Network? In, uh, I have. So I need to correlate that with. Uh, with my infrastructure, I do. I need to do a strategy profiling about it. So having too much of data and um, having too much of feeds is not our end objective. Our end objective is to map that particular things to our own infrastructure and draw a desirable outcome so that we could uh, detect it, we could prevent it, and if it is already in this environment, then we could respond to it. 
So now uh, the attack life cycle since now has evolved, right? We have been seeing uh, Lockheed Martin cyber kill chain where uh, uh, it is divided mainly into the five to six stages. Where attacker do the initial reconnaissance, then uh, it, it will look for some vulnerabilities into the system. Then it will establish their foot, uh, footprint uh, with uh, with existing vulnerabilities, which are the new vulnerabilities. Uh, and then it will look for those high profile or maybe high value assets uh, where they can reach and do a maximum impact, right? Uh, so that privilege escalation or maybe internal reconnaissance can happen if uh, attacker wants to keep its foothold uh, into the um, um, uh, into the east west traffic. So, uh, but one thing had changed uh, over the years, and uh, we have also seen in last uh, year that. Hacker is not immediately trying to make a damage to any of the organization. And the solar wind act is a good example. That attacker is trying to be in infrastructure for long. It is trying to understand that uh, how can I do internal reconnaissance in the uh, in the short period of time? It may be a two months or three months. And I could make the maximum impact, whether it is a financial impact, or whether it is a reputational impact. So how can I maximize uh, efforts? Uh, to make a larger impact, and that is the that is a persistence activity that attacker is trying on more frequent basis, and they are mainly uh, they are mainly motivated motivated by that. So I think this evolved cyber kill chain and cyber attack kill chain is really going to give hard time uh, in coming future. So what could be our uh, initial strategy, and that we will discuss in the second part. So I quickly wanted to take one example of solar winds where. Uh, uh, where you know uh, what exactly happened in this particular breach, right? So, uh, so, so the, if you look at the impact, right, the 425 of the US Fortune 500 organizations got impacted by that. A lot of top, uh, top US telcos and other organizations, which are part of um, uh, part of the network, uh, uh, got impacted due to this, right? So this is a very uh, clear and ideal example of a supply chain attack where uh, we you will ensure that you are uh, really doing good in terms of security. We are taking all the preventive measures. Uh, you are doing all um, incident response drills and all those things. But if there is one weakest link in the supply chain of your service provider or your product uh, product provider, then there that can be a, that can be a weakest link uh, which can be. Uh, which can reach to you and make an impact uh, or maybe make maximum damage to you, right? So I think the supply chain, managing the supply chain, looking at uh, those weakest points, uh, doing a monitoring over the different elements of your supply chain is also critical. That's what we learn from the solar wind attack. So this is what I was talking about uh, when we discuss cyber kill chain, right? So if you see that uh, this particular attack, uh, the initial recommence has started in the September 2019. Where attackers started uh, accessing the solar winds, um, uh, solar wind infrastructure, and then they started injecting some test code. Means they wanted to do some TOC before they actually inject the code into the uh, production environment. So it started in that September 2019, and if you see that it is, it has got detected in December. Uh, December 2021, such a long period where attacker could really get down into the infrastructure, learn about uh, infrastructure, what is high value asset, what are those low value assets, how can I make a maximum impact. So all the things uh, uh, that attacker has taken, so that's what he made the persistent into the solar wind infrastructure. And once he do the, once he make a persistence, what he identified that, okay, there is no vulnerability in the source code. but what where I'm in the injection where there is a build infrastructure. So build infrastructure where there was once there was uh, some vulnerabilities which was exploited by the attacker. So this is a very uh, new and unique scenario where attackers have not identified any vulnerability in the source code. Rather they have identified vulnerability into the build machine or build infrastructure and they have pushed or injected a test code uh, which was a, uh, which was a certificate backdoor. Uh, from the from where uh, they could they could infiltrate other malware uh, like a PM drop or RAM drop, uh, which was the ultimate payload of the malware, uh, which could do the remote code execution or do an internal reconnaissance, or steal some important data and credentials. 
So if you see, this is a multi-stage attack where uh, where attacker has gone to the environment, he has the initial reconnaissance, then done the POC, where they can inject the code. Then he found out the build infrastructure is vulnerable, uh, source code is not vulnerable. Then they have infiltrated uh, that or injected the code uh, into the into the into the uh, the particular software package while the build the, while build was happening. And since build was happening, there was such a lengthy code, and uh, it was it was very difficult to check again the code in after the build. So immediately the signing authorities immediately signed that particular software, and it was out there for the production. Um, so I think this is a very ideal scenario where uh, we really need to th uh, think about um, uh, trust, right? It was a complete breach of trust. So it was injection of a malicious code, and then was the certification. Uh, of that particular software application and it was distributed to the clients. So uh, the point which I am making here that if you see this particular multi as uh, you see the sophistication level and for, and this is a completely unknown vulnerability that was found on the build, build infrastructure. So if you want to identify those unknowns uh, in your infrastructure, if you wants to find those unknown threads. Uh, so threat intelligence is one of the answer where uh, where you will you will you will work upon. So when I talk about threat intelligence, not every time it should be external threat intelligence. It can be internal threat intelligence and we will discuss uh, more about threat intelligence. So what are the challenges that uh, now uh, organizations are facing in terms of maturing their security operations? So, uh, so first, first problem I think I would see that there is a limited visibility over the assets. So there are no visibility over the assets. What applications are running? What services are running on the top of that? So sometimes you have visibility over your assets, but you are not having the visibility over what application and services are running on that particular assets. So I think that's one of the critical challenge I could see. Uh, the second challenge is a white noise, right? You have a lot of information, a lot of heterogeneous alerts and data fields, and from that you may not every time need you not you may not every time able to correlate that with your existing infrastructure. Third is um, when you have a lot of information, when you have a lot of data sets, uh, uh, how do you correlate that? How do you do a statistic profiling? Uh, so definitely there will be a, some sort of false positive and you need to consider and factor those false positive and try to minimize those false positive in your infrastructure. Then there is a uh, there is definitely one uh, aspect which uh, hounding many security uh, professionals is about building the end-to-end -end operations because uh, as a security chief you need to build operations from the scratch, you need to take care of every single department of your organization and I think that's where most of the organizations are uh, facing the challenges. Another good uh, challenge is that how much automation means we are now developed and driven by AML solution. And from morning, there are different capability providers who are present in that talking about the importance of automation. But uh, but as a uh, if I look at from the user perspective or user automation perspective, there is always question in front of a CISO or CIO that how much automation that I should do. Because security cannot be completely automated. There would be uh, some intervention, maybe a sort of manual intervention, or maybe some sort of um, uh, some sort of a manual use cases that you would definitely require as a part of your SOC. So that is another challenge that we have seen. And so six, which is most important challenge, is the skill sets. Most of the time, we are building all the uh, all the required infrastructure, security capabilities, um, and uh, we have inline processes at security operation center. But we don't have those skill set who can effectively monitor the events, who can effectively take a decision in terms of a quick response. So I think that particular skill set is really lagging uh, in the cybersecurity industry, uh, and I think that's uh, one of the key issues and challenges that we face by organizations. So now I will quickly run through the threat intelligence part uh, since uh, we are uh, we are having uh, less time left. Uh, so uh, why we need threat intelligence and what are the different type of threat intelligence? So cyber intelligence, cyber threat intelligence is to know more about those known and unknowns, uh, knowing who can hit you and who can attack you, so knowing a bit more about adversaries. What are their particular motivations? What are their tactic, techniques, and procedures? For example, if you see most of the attacks, there are several groups they repeatedly involved into the some of the attacks. For example, there is a Lizaros group who is a uh, who is a uh, who is a behind those targeted phishing campaigns and continuously uh, targeting the Indian critical information infrastructure or banking in, uh, banking infrastructure. 
so you need to understand who is trying to attack us and what is the motivation of that particular uh, attack uh, so if you, if you understand that and if you know that then you it will help you to make a better decision about your defense so that is about threat intelligence and there could be a different type of intelligence means it's not necessary that every time intelligence has to be from outsiders it has to be in the form of advisory it has to be in the form of news feeds or it has to be in the form of intelligence card it is not mandatory sometimes it is possible that you get very good internal intelligence that this is what the our infrastructure look like this is what the special campaign is actually is there so i think you get lot of intelligence in as well which you tend to ignore and most of the organizations they believe on what we are getting from outside so uh, it can be internal it can be external threat intelligence so now uh, the one aspect which is very important that uh, uh, about threat intelligence is to understand first is the motive and intent uh, and when we talk about the strategic and tactical intelligence in our coming slide we will talk about it so uh, i take the example of a few groups right so maybe uh, uh, maybe groups which are attacking the financial sectors what is their motive and intent uh, to attack us means they are this group is usually trying to uh, target and focused uh, phishing campaigns and after phishing campaign what exactly they try to do they drop malware which is uh, capable of doing remote code execution which is capable of doing ddos which is capable of doing uh, some infiltration uh, or exploitation of a data so we need to understand the motive and intent behind the adversaries and another aspect is what what are the capabilities that particular advisory has what what it what is what is what is it up to means what capabilities it has and how it can damage your own infrastructure so i think understanding that capability and uh, it's a um, it's a it's a motivation and intent is one of the important and critical piece to in the today's uh, in the today's world and then uh when we talk about it uh, there are few things that we need to understand when we talk about intelligence who is trying to attack us what exactly uh, trying to attack us where means whether it is on a network whether it is on endpoint or whether it is on the some sort of applications and when the chronology of that particular uh, that particular attack what exactly um, uh, what exactly the chronology of that particular attack and why and how so the the last the last two pieces why and how are very much important right if you understand the why then you get the most of the strategic and tactical answers if you if you understand the how then you get most of the preventive uh, measures right so if you know these six parameters who what where and when and why and how about any threat intelligence then you can definitely convert that intelligence into the actionable intelligence then uh, then when we talk about the threat intelligence, uh, threat intelligence there are three things we need to divide so what exactly this threat is about and then the six parameters who what where when how and uh, uh, why uh, why about that particular threat what impact we is trying to make organization and what action we can take immediately in order to mitigate that if you divide uh, this particular threat intelligence into three basic steps i think that is more enough uh, so what could have happened that people usually trying to sugar coat threat intelligence a lot and they try to complicate the things uh in a different different new terminologies and i think uh, that's where most of the confusion arises so we need to also look at the simplistic manner and that has to be uh, these three aspects so what exactly threat is all about whether it is from internal threat intelligence or uh, external threat intelligence and all the six parameters which you need to map to that particular threat intelligence field the second what impact it will make it will make on my organization i need to understand i need to get into the my organization context i want to look for something else which is not relevant for me and third which is the most important which is our end objective what action that i could take uh, so that i can mitigate that particular threat so that i am safe right so it is a very basic and three question rules that organization needs to adopt when when they get any threat intelligence feed uh, another aspect uh, to the threat intelligence feed is a context and action sometime uh we missed out of that particular context so uh, i was just attending one of the conference uh, last week and there was when uh, there was when there was one talk where uh, we were talking about we are living into the world of lot of information and we need to navigate through lot of information to identify useful information right so we get lot of intelligence feed from uh, different capability providers different consortiums uh, different isacs your internal security solutions but how you can contextualize that that's more important because if i am getting the intelligence from 
uh, one of the intelligence provider, and that is regarding the oil and gas or maybe a scala system. And I am sitting at the bank. That is not relevant for me. Or maybe some uh, some threat which is completely attacking some special purpose system, and which is not relevant to me. So I think that is not. Uh, relevant for me, so I need to contextualize every intelligence field to benefit my organization. And then, secondly, it should be followed by the uh, action from the two perspective. One is a technical perspective, which I will take immediate action. For example, if one uh, if one ransomware activity, which is a found from, for example, Maze ransomware, so what I could do that I could do possible mapping of the signature domains and CNC server, immediately block those into the different. Um, Uh, infrastructure, whether it is a network, whether it is endpoints, or whether it is somewhere else, I could immediately block those. And second, is on the policy side of what what could I what should I do as my security operation center policies, right? What can I do at organizational level so that I be I may not see this threat again in my infrastructure. So I think context and action is very much important. Uh, so I talk about the context and action. So this is the one case study and example that uh, we have, right? About the uh, certain vulnerabilities and cyber intelligence. So this is an example of intelligence uh, that is received uh, by one of the organization. And we talk about the exploitation of MS zero eight zero six seven vulnerability. So uh, for example, uh, this vulnerability is for the electric power transmission. So if I am the organization which is working and heavily using that particular systems. Uh, in my organization, then this organization, this this particular intelligence is relevant for me. Then I need to contextualize this intelligence into the actionable, right? So what action I I take so based on the context, based on the information that I get from the intelligence field, basis that I need to prepare my action plan. Whether I need to pass the vulnerability, whether I need to prevent that particular communication which is happening CNC, I need to block those IP addresses, I need to block those domains. If I need to check whether adversaries are dropping any mal malicious payload in my systems, so if they are dropping, then I need to do an internal and lateral scan. I need to eliminate that threat from my environment. So I think this is where uh, this is where rapid and speedy action, which will be enabled by threat intelligence. I get the intelligence. I will contextualize based on my organization uh, and my uh, uh, my infrastructure. And I immediately do action against it. As simple as it is. And then there are three types of intelligence that any organization can receive from any of the sources. So that could be a tactical intelligence. Uh, so that could be operational intelligence. That could be a strategic intelligence. So we'll go by strategic intelligence first. Strategic intelligence is the intelligence where uh, those intelligence usually help the CISO level people, CISOs and CIO, based on any activities which are happening uh, in the current scenario, whether it is a ransomware campaign, whether it is a phishing campaign, or whether it is any sort of a campaign. Uh, what strategic decision I need to take? Whether I need to buy any solution, whether I need to make some policy changes, if I need to make a changes in my framework, um, so all which, or maybe due to the work from home, there are different attack vectors uh, attacking the remote infrastructure. So I need to do any architectural change. I need to go for a zero architect, zero trust architecture. I need, I need to go for SASE model. So all the decision will be done based on the strategic threat intelligence. The second is the operational threat intelligence, which is more. Uh, More technical intelligence, which are uh, so usually people call operational and technical separately, but I'm just combining as a part of operational intelligence. So IOCs, uh, uh, maybe the uh, domain names, uh, IOCs, your uh, SHA uh, SHA-256, all those signatures combinedly, which can be readable, can, can be read by machine. For example, I get the IOCs and I immediately, um, I, I immediately send it to the my uh, WAF team or my SOC team to create a rule out of it, right? So the intelligence which is read uh, read by the machine very easily and make immediate action on top of that. So most of those intelligence are operational intelligence. So tactical intelligence. So now I think next uh, part of the presentation we'll talk about it. Uh, so uh, and we also talk in the initial stage that why today tactical intelligence is more important because uh, you see that attackers are using a different version and variant of ransomware. So uh, I was talking to one of the organization uh, last month. And they attack by three different, uh, three or four different type of a ran different version of a same ransomware, right? So attackers are making uh, that particular mutation in the version of those particular ransomwares or any sort of a malware. In that case, it is very difficult to spot, or it is very difficult to detect or spot that particular threats because those are very, those are changing very rapidly. Those are changing very uh, uh, at, at a speed. They are they are dropping their signatures. 
uh, and they are adopting the new signatures uh, every day and every hour for that matter. So in that in that situation, we really need to adopt some different approach and learning tactic techniques and procedures, mapping that with MITRE type framework or any exhaustive framework maybe you have internally. That is more critical. So if you learn about tactic techniques and procedure of attacker, uh, then tomorrow you will go more towards the behavioral based detection. Um, and um, and you will be able to easily correlate that with your infrastructure. And when you see any kind of suspicious activity in your infrastructure, then immediately you will stop that activity before it, it is making some sort of uh, impact to your organization. So, uh, so this is what we discussed about the tactical, operational and strategic uh, intelligence, right? So very quickly, uh, the strategic uh, um, um, intelligence that you completely get it from the kind of sector you are in, uh, kind of nature, or maybe nature of organizations you are in, and then kind of assets you have. Uh, so this will drive the operational intelligence. And tactical intelligence is more from the attack vector's point of view. What attacks they are trying to use, whether they are trying supply chain attacks, whether they are trying social engineering, we are trying, whether they are trying multi stage attack like solar wind. So all the tactical information that you get it from the tactical intelligence field. So now, uh, now you will, you will, now you will. Uh, and last point is that uh, how to convert those threat intelligence into the actionable, right? So we also call it as the operational, operationalizing threat intelligence, right? Uh, so I think uh, threat intelligence is always followed by uh, operation of a threat hunting, right? So you receive some intelligence. Uh, you you diagnose it in a such a way that you understand the intention, it's a motivation, uh, it's impact, and it's a mitigation, right? Uh, uh, but that is about the known things. But what about the unknown things, right? So threat hunting is one of the key answer to that, and uh, we discussed that how we can augment our security operations and maturity of security operations by threat hunting. So threat hunting is actually a process which actually talks about the proactive uh, security measures, which don't wait for uh, any things to be uh, shared or any things to be known. It actually uh, work on the external or internal threat intelligence. It takes that as an input and it takes some proactive steps uh, to convert that intelligence into uh, some actionables. For example, uh, so, for example, uh, we will go quickly because we are out of time. So, for example, this is an example. For example, this is a type of internal threat intelligence. So, uh, there is an internal uh, there is an internal team member who felt that one of the email is malicious, and then he notified the security operation team about that particular email, uh, which looks suspicious. So, this is the kind of intelligence here that that you got. That is a type of intelligence which you received from your internal team member. So immediately you will activate your sense and you, you will activate your proactive hunting and intelligence team where you will try to analyze uh, that particular email, you take it on a sandbox, you try to see a literal uh, whether it exists in other domain, other servers and you do that particular scanning uh, and once you do that, you conduct the hunting whether, uh, whether it is just phishing campaign or whether it is doing some other nefarious activities. So you do a complete diagnosis of that particular event incident and you come up with some action plan, whether to consider this particular as a phishing campaign, what next I should do that uh, it will not again hit my organization or again it will not uh, hit my uh, infrastructure. If it, if, it is not, uh, I'm not, if it is not phishing campaign, then you will learn from it and you will create a use case for your security operation center. The second uh, that, for example, your security team is getting some intelligence from uh, the outsider or maybe from the entity which is working with you as a security capability provider. If you are getting intelligence from them, then your security operation team is uh, functionalizing and operationalizing on that intelligence. Which is trying to do, understand the motivation of that particular attack, uh, then trying to understand the tactic, techniques and procedures, contextualizing that request, mapping that your framework, uh, mapping that with your organization. And once you map it, then you take a uh, preventive action or maybe a corrective action. So, uh, so this is our uh, case studies about it. So now, uh, so this is how you can operationalize the threat intelligence through threat hunting uh, to understand to identify those known and unknown within your infrastructure. So now, very important thing which we need to discuss is about uh, how to operationalize the threat intelligence, and that is the last part of our presentation. So now you will say that my team is very small; that I cannot uh, have the all the resources which 
can work day and out for threat intelligence and threat hunting. So there are three levels which you can work. So level one where you are uh, starting out and you don't have many resources for threat intelligence. So what do you need to do? For level two, you have some resources which can work on your threat intelligence and threat hunting, but maybe not full time or maybe uh, not that actively. And third, when you have an advanced cyber security team where you can actively work on a threat intelligence and threat hunting, which we discussed, and they can operationalize on a day-to-day -day basis. So in the, layer, in the level one, what you can do as an organization, you can gather the intelligence, whether it is internal or external. You can subscribe to the advisory which you get from a cert. You can subscribe to the advisory which you get from a different information sharing center. You can subscribe to the advisories which is shared by DSCI threat intelligence and research. So we share every day uh, threat intelligence feeds with our member, and we also share some feeds on social media as well on Twitter handle. So you can get the information and intelligence from a various sources, and you can correlate that with your infrastructure, your organization, and uh, check and scan whether this kind of a threats exist in your exist in your organization, and if they exist, then what preventive or corrective action that you need to take. So how you can search? That uh, that you can go to the MITRE attack framework quickly, uh, and uh, so uh, my uh, so uh, due to the time constraint, I'm not jumping to the MITRE attack framework, but I will show a screenshot. So you can go to the MITRE attack framework and you check for those APT groups which you have, which you will receive uh, from the uh, threat intelligence advisories or intelligence fields, and then you can map those intelligence uh, fields uh, to the MITRE attack framework. Where you will learn tactical techniques and procedures. For example, I'm just mapping this uh, this particular uh, particular group uh, uh, to the MITRE ATT framework and trying to learn APT 34 group, for example, and trying to map uh, APT 34 and APT 33 group to the MITRE ATT framework and learning what tactical techniques and procedures that is that he's using, right? Um, so if it is a brute force. If, if that particular group is using brute force, then I know that how brute force works. So then I will take care uh, of my uh, privilege, uh, my, my identity access management plan to secure and safeguard my identities and make sure that uh, I have a strong password so that no brute force tactic will be successful against my organization. So, uh, so then again, I can uh, do a further mapping of different different threat actors. So there is a good, there is a nice dashboard which is a broader matter attack framework where actually you can learn uh, tactic techniques in the different stages of attack. You can learn in the initial access, you can learn in execution stage, you can learn into the persistent stage. So every execution stage that we have seen in the cyber kill chain, there are a lot of techniques, techniques which are mapped against it. So once you choose the attacking group or you choose the threat actor, you can easily find out those uh, tactic techniques and procedures used by them. So going one step ahead of those operational intelligence or maybe IOCs so that you can learn about tactic techniques and procedures. So once you know the tactic techniques and procedures, then it is very easy to uh, easy for you uh, to uh, to identify uh, if that particular threat exists in your environment. If it don't exist, then it is fine. So that. Uh, you will be prepared, you will be having some rules so that when it comes to your environment, you will be completely prepared. And if it is already in this environment, then you can take some preventive and corrective actions. So we, in, initially we discussed the detection part. So detection is not that uh, quick in current context because the solar wind hack took around one and a half year to identify. So if already exist in, exist, in your, exist in your infrastructure, then it will help to identify that and take a preventive and corrective measures. If it does not exist, then it will make you prepare for the next incident. So now, uh, talk about all things uh, uh, about the head-handing, intelligence sharing, and maturing your cell operations, security operations with head-handing intelligence. How do I check the, uh, the effectiveness? Because lots of people ask question that, these are very hunting and intelligence are very subjective that you don't have any uh, key performance indicator to measure that whether your intelligence program is uh, making a success and how do you exactly uh, uh, you know uh, how do you exactly measure the effectiveness so very simple rule that uh, the, the, the four is the completeness so how sufficient and uh, how um, how complete intelligence that I am getting second how accurate they are um, how accurate my intelligence um, and how accurate I can action and function on them. The third, what is the relevance? 
whether those really make sense to me or whether they really, really relevant to me. If if not relevant, then I will not be bother about it. And then the NMS. If I receive the intelligence, which is uh, a very important in this stage, if I receive this intelligence after one month, then that doesn't make sense. And if uh, if I got the intelligence, which is a complete in nature, which is accurate, which is very relevant, but if I don't take a timely action against it today itself, then again that is uh, that is that doesn't make sense to me at all. So the CART rule is a completeness, accuracy, relevance, and timeliness are very important to measure the success of a threat intelligence and threat hunting program. So I think uh, that is all uh, from our side. So I just one reminder that uh, so we are very active on a Twitter. So our handle is BSCR threat intelligence and research on a Twitter, where we share. Uh, day to day intelligence, we share a lot of information. So I request you to please follow our uh, Twitter handle for quick alerts and updates. So it's not we share only tactical and strategic intelligence, we share a lot of operational intelligence as well. I request you to please uh, follow our handle and be in touch uh, with us. And secondly, please uh, also subscribe to our advisories that we share on a monthly basis whether those are threat, threat advisories or ransomware specific advisories that we share every every month. So please subscribe to our advisory and make a use of that. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't see any questions and we are also out of time.